What's up, everybody? Uh, want to talk to you real quick about wedges. Uh, it's not something that I've ever really talked about, and it's not something that I just uh, I'm terribly diverse in. You know, I've only ran like three different types of wedges since I've been uh, really getting into tree cutting or maybe four, I can't remember. But anyway, I run these uh, K and H redheads or whatever they are. And uh, I ran the Husqvarna for a long time. Uh, and then I ran like the uh, TSC brand, the yellow country line wedges or whatever. And uh, honestly, they're all decent wedges if you need to get a tree over. And I've used uh, the big metal light splitting wedges, uh, they, you know, they're pretty tall. I have used them before. Uh, not really something you want to use if you're going to use a pretty decent axe. Now, if you're using like, I know some people like carry a small sledgehammer or a, you know, like a two pound hammer with them. <clears throat> the metal ones would be all right, I guess, if that's what you want to do. But, uh, I found that the country line from TSC, they're, uh, they're fairly cheap, or they was, I hadn't bought them in a long time, and as long as you're not having to double stack the wedge, they do uh, fairly good, because uh, they're really, they're real hard, hard plastic, uh, so they don't stack very well, uh, which any wedge, like the, these K&H's, I've had them spit out on me before, uh, most recently, the last cutting video when I cut that tree that uh, the top was hung up in another top, uh, I had more problems with wedge spitting out of that tree than I have narrow tree that I've cut uh, and had to wedge. I don't know what the deal was with it, but they spit out. Other than that, these K and H's, I've never really had them spit out. They're, they're really good for stacking. And I, I had three different types of these K and H's but I'll go over them in a minute. But the country line, they're all right if you're just single wedging. But but they're close to being so hard that you got to watch because they'll bust. Like I've, I've busted a couple of those. So I quit running those and then I went to the, the Husqvarna wedges. And you get them at TSC too just because I was there and needing some wedges and, you know, I don't have any, like uh, what I would say, like big saw shops around here, like carry everything that a timber cutter would need. So you just kind of get what you get. Like uh, typically whatever the dealer is, that's what t kind of uh, wedge they carry. Like, you know, if you go to my steel dealer, they have steel wedges. If you go to my Husky dealer, they have Husky wedges, so on and so forth. So I just, got these and honestly these are good wedges they stack good they're not terribly soft where they mushroom out really bad uh but they do mushroom out some but you're gonna get that if you're gonna if you're gonna use a soft wedge that you can stack uh and the k k and h are the same way uh typically i buy like a six eight and a, whatever these is 10 or 12 inch I'll get a couple of each. And uh, depending on the size of timber or tree that I'm cutting, depends on what I carry with me. I'm not gonna carry these uh, 10, 10 inch, I'm gonna measure them real quick. I didn't know when I ordered them. No, I couldn't. I can't really remember. They're, they're a foot, so. These are 11, close to a foot, but okay, so these are 12 inches. So like I got the 12 and 10s and eights or something like that. And then like in the Huskies, I got the six, eight and 10s. I get three different sizes typically, just some wedges I have are like that long, you know, for smaller trees. Uh, but you can get by with a long wedge, sticking it in sideways, you know, not going straight in to your face cut, offset it. And then some I've, Cut the sides off of and broke and chipped and everything else. Uh, but these K and H's, they stack. Probably are the best stacking wedge that there is. 
that I've used. I don't know, you know, out of the few that I've mentioned, but they're really, really soft. You can hit them a couple times and they're, uh, you know, starting to mushroom out like that, which is not terrible unless you got something that's really hard to, to bang over, you know. But the, the reason for this video is I've got some new wedges and these, I don't know what brand they are. I got them up there at the Bunyan Show. Of course, y'all seen the short about it. Uh, they seem fairly hard, maybe a little harder than the, uh, these and the K&H's. So we'll see how they do. I don't know how they'll be at stacking, but I, these are 11 inches. They ain't quite a foot, but they do have a little more lift than what I've not taken off of the ends of this these big k and h's not enough to you get like an inch and a quarter of lift i think these are like an inch and a half they are so you get a quarter inch more lift out of these green ones like say i don't know the brand i bought them in the tent i wish i would have asked but it's a little too late for that uh so it's a little shorter but you get a little more lift and then these right here the eight inch ones i guess these are yeah eight and a half nine whatever they're uh i think like three quarters of an inch lift about an inch so they're they're fairly similar to the husky and the other uh regular k and h i did have these k and h wedges that are short i think it's still close to factory edge out. they're like seven inches long or whatever but they were, were what I call like quick lift because they had like an inch and a half of lift. Like I ground some of that off and it's at an inch and a quarter. So they had like a inch and a three eighths, inch and a half lift and that short of a distance. I kind of like that. But I'm gonna try these wedges and I'll let you know how, because they're cheap. Like this was eight bucks. And that's not bad. I don't. I can't remember what the K and H is run, but I'm fairly certain they're more. This is like seven bucks. And then of course I got some of these hard heads, and I think these were like uh, nine or ten dollars. I think they was like ten bucks. So I don't know how much they normally run, but I'm gonna try these too. I got these because a lot of trees around here. Well, not, I'm not gonna say a lot, but several of the trees around here they uh you only need just a little bit to tip it over you know and they're pretty heavy they're not like uh 90 percent of the trees i cut have a very very big canopy so and they're you know heavy to move they don't need much to tip them but their their weight's not all center mass with a with a slimmer canopy and lighter branches you know we've got some oak trees and red oaks around here hickory trees beech you know the canopy on them things may be dang near as wide as the tree is tall and it takes a lot to move that especially when the sap's up so i got some of these so i can really uh, the first initial lifting i can bang it up and typically when i'm pulling a tree like if i've got a cable on it or a chain or whatever uh i still back it up with wedges wedges is very very important if you're going out and cutting trees and you don't have wed any wedges uh check out some videos on how to wedge or whatever or showing you how to use the wedge if you don't know nothing about it and uh it'll save you from cutting your hinge off and the tree going over your shoulder or falling sideways it really will if you know how to do it uh, a lot of the time the problem is people stick these wedges in they give it like two or three taps and they think well it it's moved it should be falling you know well sometimes i've had trees like this right here before they decide to break on off now once you get it past center and you can actually see it then you probably can go in there and tickle the the face cut, sometimes I do that. I probably wouldn't advise it if you're not very experienced, but you know, you can tickle the back cut or whatever and get it to fall on over. Uh, but
but people don't put enough lift in them. Sometimes you gotta double stack them. I've had to put three wedges in there and be pulling with a chain to get a tree to move. But I always back up my, my cables, ropes, or chains if I'm pulling a tree with a wedge. That way in case your chain, cable, or rope breaks, your pulling device, I should say, breaks, if it breaks, that tree's not, it's not gonna move. You may not be able to, well, you, you probably can if you put enough wedges in it. Uh, because the more wedges you use, it's just like a, a gear in a pickup or whatever, or, you know, gearing. You know, you use one wedge, it's gonna be harder. You use two wedges, it's gonna make it easier because all the pressure isn't just on one wedge. You can, you know, you get this one sink in this far and then you back it up with this one and then you do it you know vice versa i'm just got them staggered so i can show you and then the more you use the easier it is you hit every one of them and it just is like like gearing in a vehicle so i always back it up that way if that thing breaks that tree's not flopping back and to potentially snapping your hinge off and going towards the house or the property line or wherever you're not wanting it to fall vehicles whatever it may be so if you're cabling a tree or pulling with a rope or even pushing or whatever back it up with wedges and uh i'm not going to just 100 percent guarantee it but i just about guarantee it if you leave your hinge the right way you you can have a tree pretty well you know with a very very bad back lane and get it over now you want to go directly if you're pulling a tree, you want to go directly against its lean if it's very bad. You know, I have pulled some with some side lean, but you got to be careful that you don't break your hinge. But I'm not going to get all into that trying to explain it without showing you or whatever or doing it because it's going to confuse everybody. But anyway, what I'm getting at is wedges are important. And uh, depending on the size of the timber that I'm cutting or the tree, it determines the size of wedge I pack. So if it's uh, 30 inch or plus trees, every single one of them, I'm gonna pack the, you know, the eight and 12 inch wedges. If it's uh, smaller stuff, I'm gonna pack to, to have handy. I'm gonna pack, I carry all my wedges in my truck when I go cutting, just in case you never know. Unless I forget like I did on, the, on a couple trees and then I use some wood that I found and made one, but that's not ideal. But I carry all my wedges, and I'm just talking about what I carry in my pouch, you know. Uh, sometimes if the tree is smaller than uh, 30 inches, then I'll carry a little smaller wedge or whatever. So it gives me room. Another thing I want to talk about is when I first started this YouTube channel, like my first or second video was about chainsaw bars. And a lot of these bars I've been running pretty steady for close to a year now nine months and cutting about every day if not every other day and definitely every weekend for at least one of the days uh except when i went to bun show i didn't use any but i've been cutting i've been cutting quite a bit i've cut quite a few trees with them and quite a quite a few tops you know so uh i want to talk about that and i want to show you a few things uh which i've got uh, I've got some R bars, laser bars. First thing, one thing, and another. I've got the Forster bar. I've got the Husky bars, Husky light bars. Echo bars and all kinds of stuff. Still like, still like bars. I'm just going to tell you, for the most part, with the exception of that 32 inch laser bar, I'm not having trouble with any of the bars other than the host forma. Uh, if you're a if you're a chainsaw builder or a hobbyist or just can't afford uh, a lot of different expensive bars and you need one 
then yes, I would I would most definitely buy one. If all you know, and if all I did was just you know buck straight logs of firewood, they might not be too bad uh, for just a seasonal woodcutter or just the average person cutting a tree here and there out of the yard. You know, maybe you use your chainsaw once or twice a year. I'm not going to knock them for that because everybody needs a, a bar they can afford. And I'm not saying they're a terrible bar. I'm saying if you are a person that is trying to make money with a saw or you use your saw at least once a week or once every two weeks or something like that, if you get what I'm saying, you probably don't want to uh, waste your money on on these and some people have told me you know well maybe you could get a different tip and uh, change the tip out well you know if you're gonna do all that then why not just go ahead and buy the bar and uh, a good bar because one of these bars the end split out uh, of course bore cutting's hard on on stuff and I do a lot of bore cutting but it that sprawled out on me I think I ran this well I didn't even get the the paint wore off of it. Probably didn't run a, even a tank of fuel when I was using this bar jacked up on me. And then this bar right here, uh, tree slid back on me when I was cutting, kind of got pinched, which I've had it on other bars. It wasn't bound up very bad, like I pulled a saw out very easy, and it bent bent the bar so i i wouldn't recommend them if you're uh, on a chainsaw quite a bit and i like cold swarm stuff now they're chain i love it but these bars if you're gonna uh well, i can't put um, the bars i have here they're plenty good enough for anybody. I Like I say, I've used them quite a bit. The only trouble I had was with one of the laser bars. They're the cheapest lightweight bar that I found. They have the Samara tips in them. And nothing wrong with the bar, just the tip. Something happened to the tip. I don't know if what, what it was. I changed the tip out, it's been fine. But I ran other laser bars, like I ran this one uh, quite a bit bore cut quite a bit with it and everything and I've not had a minute's trouble out of it. Uh, they're light, they're light like the Samara. They're as light as the steel bar, but they're not, uh, they're not as stout when it comes to the flex. They're as light as the steel light bar until you get up into the, like the, the 32 inch bars. Uh, they're very similar in weight. Uh, the Husqvarna, all it is, is a rebranded, uh, Suji bar, and they're lighter than a heavyweight bar, but they're not as light as the Smar and the Steel Light bar. But they are, these Husky bars are a little stiffer than the uh, Laser and the Samar bars. And of course, uh, as far as heavyweight bars, this Forrester bar I think was like 50 or 60 bucks. I run the absolute crap out of it, not had a man's trouble. It's been a good bar. If you don't mind a heavy bar, it's probably the best bang for your buck uh, in use. You know, uh, it's the Forrester Platinum, but it's heavier, you know. Uh, and the Samara bars, I've run a lot of, you know, the, this is a Samara 28-inch uh, heavy. It's been a good bar as well. But the main bars that I'm wanting to talk about, and of course the steel and echo heavies are, are fairly decent bars as well. And uh, I'm gonna get the 500i instead of the this, and I'll get the 462 because they're about the the most they're the most similar in weight and size and everything. I just hit y'all on up. But I want to tell you something to me. Here's the deal with the Samara. Now, if you can find a laser bar in the size you want, I say go for it, uh, money-wise and everything like that, because they are 
They are a cheaper bar. Like I think my laser bars, the two foot and even the 32 inch was, I think the 24 was like 80 bucks and maybe the, the 32 was 100 or 110. I can't remember exactly. Not very bad priced at all. Uh, the Samara light bars, I don't, I haven't found a dealer around here local uh, around where I'm at. So I have to order them online or on eBay. And when you get into the 28 and the 32 inch, uh, the light tough bars or whatever they call, they call them, they're going to run you about 128 to $150. And I have seen them higher than that when there was that bar scare or whatever, when you couldn't really get the Samara bars. So what I'm getting, where I'm going with that is the steel light bar. Now, if you buy it on eBay, which still has a whole lot more, you know, dealer. And that's why a lot of uh, people use steel stuff because it's readily available. But now if you go online and try to get a steel light bar, depending on the size, it's going to run you like 160, 180 bucks, maybe even 200 bucks. I've seen them 200 bucks. I think they're selling with some chain with it or something, a chain with it. But at my local dealer, I found these steel light bars, the 28, it's 140, and the 25 inch is 130, I'm wanting to say, or it may be 140 or 150. Round about there, no more than $150 for 28 inch and under, I know that for sure. Uh, so that's not that bad. I said that to say this, if I can get a steel light bar for the same price that I can get the Samara light bar for or any other light bar for, I'm going to buy the steel light bar because they're stiffer. They feel more, they're light, but they feel more like a regular heavy bar than any of the bars that I've got. Any of the light bars I got, I should say. Uh, now, if you can find the laser bar and get one for 80 bucks, 100 bucks, then most definitely the laser bar would be the way to go. Especially if you're just a firewood cutter or just dropping a tree here and there, or even a yard tree guy, you know, you're gonna be in one cut and the rest of the time you're gonna be bucking the stuff up and cleaning it up. Uh, the laser bar's not that bad. And I've even fell with my laser bars and stuff. What time, it ain't like I go out and fall, you know, thousands of trees or nothing. I'm just saying like uh, five or more trees. I have done that. And the uh, still light bars just are a lot better when it comes to that. Because you can set it up here and there is hardly no, no flex. I mean, that thing is fairly you know fairly stiff it's not going to walk on you much in the cut or let the wood grain or tightness to pick how it goes you know in the curve now these on the other hand it's got bounce bounce you know and that's the laser which the laser and the samara are really really similar This don't have that much bounce for sure. Which bounce, I mean, if it ain't got bounce, that's what I mean in the stiffness. So, it's really good. I got a Samara bar on the, the 395. We'll see if it's any, any better, which I know this saw is heavier. So it's gonna make it, but you'll still be able to see the bounce. And that's a 28 inch bar. So the uh, the Samara laser bars do have a bit more bounce, and the Samara bars are just about as much as, if not more, than what I can get the steel light bars for. So I'm going to buy a steel light bar over the Samara bars. Unless I can find, you know, unless the Samara bar was $50 cheaper, then that might change my mind. But I really like the steel light bars. 
now that I can find them. Would I give $200 for a still light bar? Absolutely not. Uh, that's just ridiculous. They're not that much better, but I do like the stillness of the bar. What I'm getting at, before, I know I've said that I wouldn't, you know, the Samara is just as good as still light. And price-wise, I thought it was because I only looked on eBay. But, you know, when I can get it at the steel dealer for that, then if it's the same money, then it's fine. Now, with that being said, the laser bars, $100, you know, $50 cheaper. Yeah, if I was just uh, cutting firewood or whatever, it would be more than fine. Yeah, no problem there. And I've got these uh, X Tough light bars, and I'm just going to tell you if I'm going to get a light bar, I want something that's light, that's noticeably lighter than a heavy bar. And these these bars here, and like I say, it's just a rebranded Suji. To me, they're just not it. Now they're stiff and they're lighter. You know, if the steel steel bar was real floppy, then yeah. And I'll put, I'm gonna borrow this, put this on uh, something, and show you. We'll see how stiff or floppy it is. But if the uh, you know. The steel bar was real floppy and I was needing something kind of rigid. The most definitely I would pick this because it is some lighter than a heavy bar. But they're about 130 to 40 bucks as well online. Because my dealer, when I went and looked, they did not have the X Tough light bars at the time. They was having a really, really hard time getting parts in, I, I'm gonna say. They just was. So, uh, and not like, not that there's anything wrong with these Huskies or Sujis or whatever. If you have one, I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying for 140 bucks or 50 bucks or whatever it is <clears throat> that I get for these 120, they was in that price range. Uh, the Samara Steel and the, the Suji and the Husky I have found, and not every place is going to be priced the same, but I have found them all for around the same money is what I'm getting at. Uh, so, that's the deal with that. And honestly, which I'm not, and still, mount, you might can find a little more, but honestly, the laser... And the Husky mount, all I ever found was a, and I think the 32 is even a steel mount. But the most, for the money that I give for them, the, you know, the 80 to $100 or whatever it was, I found them on eBay. Now, some dealers have them, you know, like I think the Duke or whatever, Duke Saws, whatever had them. But he had them for a little more, if I'm not mistaken. But for, I'm talking about the money like what I give for them. Uh, I only found a 24 and 32 in them, which is all right, but my favorite bar is a 28. So this is, I think, a 32. And it's got a little flex to it, which, like I say, it's a 32 inch bar. It's going to have a little more than the two footer does and whatnot, and the 28. But if, it, if I had a two footer or a 28 in it, then it would be. A little stiffer than what that is uh, but I give some when I sold saws give some away and all that kind of thing so I don't have them anymore uh, I give them away not because they're a bad bar just because I don't run them I mean I've had that bar what it is that saw I've had that bar uh, for a long while about as well you can probably go back on the videos and look and see I think when I got the 592, uh, and that's how much I ran them. <clears throat> and you can look on these steel bars. So I've got on these steels, and some of them, they already think got the paint starting to come off. I, I run them a lot. Like I say, do this because they're the lightest and they feel the most like a regular bar. Now, I can't speak for tanning bars or those Oregon 
bars that's punched out like the steel bars, but they're every cannon bar or uh, organ bar that I found like that are crazy, ridiculously high. And I just can't, uh, I, I'm just not going to give that kind of money for it. Now, if I could find one uh, price range of these, then it'd be all right. So what I'm getting at, typically if you're going to get a good bar or a decent bar, I'm not going to say good bar, but typically if you're going to get a name brand bar that most people, you know, you see a lot of people on YouTube running like the Steel Light, Suji Light, Smart Light, they're going to be a buck fifty, a buck twenty to a buck fifty, and uh, my my suggestion to you. If you're looking for, if you're not wanting a light bar and, and you're not, uh, you're just an average, uh, go out and cut a load of wood here and there, or just, if you're not using your saw every day and you're wanting cheaper stuff, or if you are using your saw every day and you're wanting uh, cheaper bars than that, if you don't mind a heavy bar, I would suggest go out and get that Forrester Platinum bar, because at the time when I bought mine, I think it was like 50 to 60 bucks, maybe. I thought that was expensive then. I didn't realize how high bars were. But, because uh, most of the time I always ran just what came on it. And then I got, you know, and the kick of running light bars. And it makes a difference, light bar does. But anyway, if you don't mind the heavy bar, I would try the four strut. And I think they've even come out with longer bars. Now, back when I was looking, I think the about the only one I could find was a two footer. And now, you know, I've seen one the other day, I think it, there was a 28 and even a 32 or a three foot in that Forrester Platinum. If I ain't mistaken, it, it was longer than two foot. I'm gonna say that. And then if you're wanting a light bar that's decent and not break the bank, check out on eBay or somewhere and try to find a laser bar. Because I know, I won't say that 24 was like 84 bucks and maybe that 32 was 99 or 109, but anyway, it was still uh, cheaper than 150. And like those Huskies and these were at least 125 to 150. I know that for sure. And tax and shipping all, they, you know, they was most definitely that. So uh, you can get in a lot of money on the bars. And those Echo bars that come on those Echos, I've had decent luck out of them, but I always grease the tip. Now I found out that steel, you don't have to. I made that grease hole, drilled that hole in my steel light bar and put it to where I could put grease in it. Uh, they carry so much oil or whatever set up, they carry so much oil down through them the way they're set up that if you grease a steel light bar, it washes the grease out in like two seconds. That's how much oil gets down in it. So. You don't need that you don't there's no need in greasing a steel light bar or a steel bar heavy bar for that matter uh they're set up to where the oil does what it needs to do to keep that tip lubricated now the other bars all the other bars i've talked about every time every time i go out cutting before i go and at least every time i sharpen them i typically grease the tips on them i try to keep the grease in them which they'll get some oil in them too but to me, if it's made to be greased, I try to grease it pretty often. And honestly, I've made that hole in there. I've cut quite a bit with that 28 inch bar that I've uh, made the hole in on different saws, 509 and whatnot, and the 661. It's probably been used most out of any bar, still light bar that I've got. It's not giving me any trouble yet, but who's to say it may not, it may make that prematurely uh, fail because I drilled that hole. Will it? Well, not, I have no idea, but there's no need in doing that. Uh, so, cause some, you know, when I do stuff, y'all can do it, but do it at your own risk. Because a lot of times when I'm showing you something, I have a thought in my head of why it would be better. And to me, it's a pretty logical thought. Uh, pretty, pretty valid point and thought at the time. And uh, not saying that there's anything wrong with it, <clears throat> but uh, sometimes it makes things better and sometimes uh, 
you wouldn't have had to done it, you know, like just like that hole or whatever. Probably wouldn't have had to do it. You can do it, but you don't have to. I will tell you, I, I do drill out all my oiler holes in every bar, uh, the steel lights and everything. Every bar that I've run on a saw has had this oiler hole drilled out by a I don't say <clears throat> it's got right on it. I don't say, say what size it is. Five thirty seconds. That's what I use. A five thirty seconds. Yeah. Every bar that I own, I drill the hole out to a five thirty seconds hole. Because my thirty two inch Samara bar, that's the size hole that is in it from the factory. And then all the other Samara bars I got, the light ones, heavy ones, or whatever, uh, they had that ramp groove in it. And they wasn't made like that, so I, and I'll show you. And I thought, what is the deal with that? So, to, to me, my thoughts were, if it's good enough for a 32-inch bar, you know, then it'll be good enough for all the rest of them. See, that it, it's ramped out like that right there. Maybe even a little bigger than the 530 seconds. But then you get into these had the little bit ramp and then a small hole so I made it bigger but anyway uh, that's my advice to you all the bars that I have ran have been good bars I have had one problem and that and, and that's with anything you may have a lemon you may not you know but I would tell you, like, uh, that 32-inch laser bar had not had a lot of time on it when the tip messed up on it. All the other, the two-foot laser bars that I got, not a bit of trouble. So, and all my other Samara bar, because the laser and the Samara has the, has the same tips. Uh, they're, uh, they've been fine, H had a lot of cutting on them. So, I don't know what the deal was with that one. That's kind of my consensus and thoughts on uh, these bars. Uh, right now, I like the Steel Light bar. Probably about the best out of any of them. And then if I was going off the uh, money, uh, laser, and that uh, would be my second pick. And then if I didn't care if it was a uh, heavyweight, or lightweight or whatever, I'd probably be uh, wearing them Forrester Platinum bars out for sure. And some of these bars I got just to try for the channel. A lot of stuff I get and do, I, I do it to try, you know, to uh, just have different things on the channel so you, you guys uh, don't have to go out and try all different bars. You can kind of see what I'm using, what I'm doing or whatever. And that's, to me, that's uh, part of the reason for having a YouTube channel is to help folks out, uh, try to give them some info on uh, whatever your channel is about. That way, they uh, can see it. We all know what YouTube's about. I look at YouTube for everything. If I didn't know how to do something that I ain't never done before, I get on YouTube and I go check it out and there somebody has already done it before me so it helps it saves me time and money because i can see it and that's what i'm getting at so anyway i appreciate y'all uh 
we are gonna have some more cutting going on. I am gonna take that 462 out and run it, run the snot out of it and see how it does and really get it in some big wood, a whole lot bigger wood than what we had. And I'm gonna take the 500 and the 400 as well, just so we can uh, compare them a little bit better. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Anyway, I guess that's about it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna try to do a, a video every day or at least every other day this month, the rest of this month. I've done one about every day since Monday or something, either a short or even a long video. I'm gonna try to do one every day this month uh, if I can because the channel is really growing. I appreciate everybody that's new. And I appreciate everybody that's been here since I first started my channel. Uh, it's really blew me away how fast that it's took off here in the last little bit. And I appreciate it, guys. I really, really do. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And remember, still, it's still your daddy. Woo! Long video, golly.